Uh, so question four is a bit of a review of what we've done in the first three and add something new. I'm just going to take some time. To get you prepped for what's coming next, we have looked at the A, the B, and the C values in examples one, two, and three, but just individually. And we developed a little bit of a shortcut idea for each of them. So first of all, if you had a number in front, which you do in part A, so we can do part A here as a bit of review, right? A number in front, that'll be a vertical stretch. So our transformation unit tells us that we're going to do y by 3. And our shortcut in this unit, we notice, is that's affected our amplitude. That value in front, somehow, you're going to have to remember that A affects amplitude. I have no idea how you're going to make the connection between the letter A and the word amplitude. But however you do it, perfect. So your A values affects the amplitude. And so what we're going to have for this graph, if I graph it directly, since the A value is 3, I now know that I have to go up 3 from my center line and down 3 from my center line. So my maximum would be positive 3 and negative 3. We still mark our period, which is 2 pi, and divide it into four equal sections. This is our axis family. And for a sine graph, a sine graph starts in the middle going up. And so each of these sections allows us to go middle, maximum, middle, minimum, middle. And so we learned that our A value affected our amplitude. And our amplitude is the distance from the center line to a maximum. So we can graph this quickly. Knowing that our amplitude is 3, we can label our max at 3 and minus 3. Next, we look at the B value on its own. And the B value is a horizontal stretch or compression. And what that's going to change, if you look at our horizontal axis, that changes our period. So A is for amplitude, and the B helps us figure out our period. I don't know if you want to say period help you remember that B is period. It's not equal to the period. It helps you find the period. And we have the formulas. So this is a review. And part B kind of reviews that in for sine and for cosine, we have the following formula. That your period is always 2 pi divided by your B value. Now, when we look at y equals sine 3x, that 3 is a horizontal compression from our transformations unit, we know that we're multiplying by 1 third. The formula then says that our period, because the b value is 3, is going to be 2 pi over 3, which is like the 2 pi was multiplied by the 1 third. So I hope you see the connection between the formula and how the horizontal compression works. So on this one, when we go to graph it, the A value of this one is 1, so our amplitude is still 1. It'll go up 1 and down to negative 1. But now that our period is 2 pi over 3, we're going to mark one period, 2 pi over 3, and divide it into four equal sections. Labeling these four sections, Half of 2 pi over 3 is pi over 3. Half of pi over 3 is pi over 6. And if you count by pi over 6, it's 1 half of pi over 6. 2 would be 2 pi over 6. 3 would be 3 pi over 6. And you could reduce that if you wanted to. But I like to leave it that way to sh so that you remember that's how I figured it out. I just counted 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6 to label that thing. It's a sine graph again. Sine graph starts in the middle going up. So we have our sections maximum, middle, minimum, middle. Okay. 
Now, in this section, we don't have a review of the C value. We reviewed A, and it was the amplitude. We reviewed B, B changes your period. It's not equal to your period, but it helps you find your period. Your C value, well, that's a horizontal translation left and right. So we did that as a review, where we just took the original graph and moved it left and right. The only thing that we haven't looked at yet is our D value. So that's what we have in part C. What would we do if we had sine x plus 3? So for part C, if I have y equals sine x plus 3, I would notice that this plus 3 is a vertical translation. That's going to move everything up this way. This is a good time. Do we need to go back to something? I am. Yeah, no problem. I know I get excited about the next question. Is that enough? Yes. Okay. And while you're working on that one, I'm just going to redraw a regular sign graph here. So basically what we have to do in part C is we just have to take our regular sine graph and we're going to have to move it up 3. One of the things that that's going to do, and you see that that's going to change where our maximum and our minimum are going to be, it's also going to change where our center lines are. Now up till now, every single question we've done, our center line has been on the x-axis. And we haven't really drawn anything because it was on the x-axis. But when we shift a sign graph up and down, we are going to label our center line sort of in a similar way that we label um, asymptotes. Okay, it's not actually part of a graph, but at three, because we're shifting that center line because everything is going up three. We're just going to draw a dotted line at y equals 3. It's not an asymptote, but it is our center line. And if we shifted things up 3, does it make sense that our maximum is now 4 and our minimum is now 2? Because it was at 1, shifting up 3 would be to 4, and the minimum at negative 1, shifted up 3, will be at 2. We can still label our period of 2 pi on here. We split it into 4 equal sections. And one thing that I was saying yesterday, and I'm going to say this over and over again, you should start to get it into your head. When you're thinking about a sign graph, we're going to say, where does the sign graph start? Sign graph starts in the middle, going up, or on the center line, going up. Look at our regular sign graph. Can you see that its starting point is on the center line, going up? Why is that important? Well, now our center line has moved up through. So when I'm going to graph this one, my starting point is here on the center line. And having the max and the min labeled, as well as the four sections of your period, allow you to go, it's going up, so I go to maximum, then center line, then minimum, then center line. And this is the graph moved up units. Okay, questions for practice on this one are six and seven. 